Good morning. Welcome again to our daily devotional here in Greenwell Street. We pray the Lord will bless us as we share together in his word. Well, let us start in prayer. Let us pray. Our loving Father, as we turn to you this morning, we thank you that you're a God who is ever ready to receive us and to hear us. We thank you that when our Lord Jesus taught his disciples to pray, he said they should say, Our Father. Lord, we cannot begin to fathom how it is that you, the creator of the universe, the one who is from everlasting to everlasting, should stoop to take any thought of the likes of us. Lord, we thank you for your love shown us in Jesus. We thank you that out of love for us, he has done all that is necessary for us and our salvation. And as we approach Easter time and our thoughts are turned toward that first Easter, we pray that it may be true of us that we learn to understand more of what it meant for you to bear away our sin. We ask for the gracious help of your Holy Spirit that in reading and listening to your word today, the truth of this word may unfold to us something new about our Lord Jesus and that we might marvel afresh at the wonder of his love shown toward us. Bless us to that end, for Jesus' sake. Amen. <clears throat> now we're reading in verses 43 to 51 of Mark chapter 14. And we are still on the Thursday evening. Just as Jesus was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared. With him was a crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests, the teachers of the law and the elders. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The men seized Jesus and arrested him. Then one of those standing near drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Am I leading a rebellion, said Jesus, that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I was with you teaching in the temple courts, and you did not arrest me. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. Then everyone deserted him and fled. A young man, wearing nothing but a linen garment, was following Jesus. When they seized him, he fled naked, leaving his garment behind. Let's start with that very last verse. Commentators believe that that was Mark, <clears throat> the writer of the Gospel account, and that is why that is included in there. But let's go back to a few moments before. Jesus has just finished praying. He has risen and with new resolve he is going now to meet his betrayer. He already knows he's on his way. He already knows what's about to unfold. And so the crowd arrive. Do you know something, notice something very striking about this? Notice what it says. With Judas was a crowd armed with swords and clubs, and here's the important bit, sent from the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders. Here were people who were out to get Jesus Christ, but were determined that others would do their dirty work for them. And so they sent others you see, they wouldn't have dared do this themselves. Indeed, we're told they were afraid to because Jesus was so popular among the people. But they had stirred up this crowd, this rabble, to do for them what they were too afraid to do themselves. Now, of course, what happened back then in that garden all those years ago is something that continues to happen throughout our world today. Crime bosses 
will encourage others to do their dirty work for them. In places children are used because they're deemed to be less likely to be caught or shot or whatever it might be. We see the depths of sin here where people hide behind others and orchestrate the evil that is in the world. And here it was happening. And that whole thing is compounded then by the way in which Judas betrays Jesus. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Now, that kiss in Eastern culture is still something that's practiced, usually one side of the cheek to the other side of the cheek. It's that intimate expression of friendship. It is that way of saying hello or saying goodbye. And here is Judas using that very intimate expression to betray the Lord Jesus Christ. What depths of sin were at work in his heart? Jesus would remind us later that it would have been better for him that he had never been born. Peter, we believe, reacts to the situation as Peter tends to do. And it says he struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Peter was resolved to defend the Lord Jesus in the face of this attack. But Jesus will have none of it. Am I leading a rebellion? He asked. That you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? And not only does he challenge those who have come to arrest him, but he challenges those who had risen up to defend him. Peter, put your sword away. And it is Luke who tells us that Jesus miraculously restored the ear for the high priest servant. Here were these people come to arrest Jesus. And in the very act of the arrest, they are witnesses to a miracle. But it hasn't changed them. They're there to do a job. And nothing's going to convince them otherwise. But the disciples, rather than standing with Christ, we are told, forsook him and fled. Remember the words Jesus has spoken earlier in the evening. You will all fall away, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. The disciples run for their lives. Jesus is left alone with the crowd, the rabble, the shouts, the swords, the clubs. And he's going to be taken off to be tried. And yet, do we not see Jesus standing above all this? in control of all this. He challenges the people why they've come. He tells his own disciples to stand down. He says this is what the scriptures said would happen. They must be fulfilled. And Jesus was living out the very prayer he had prayed only moments earlier. Father, your will be done. That's a tremendous challenge to us, isn't it? It's easy for us to say, ah, but that was the Lord Jesus saying that. But you see, the challenge is no less there to us. You know, there are so many books, wonderful books, written about the lives of so many Christian people. And they were so selfless in their living. We think of Corey and Betsy Ten Boom, used by God to protect many, many Jews during the Nazi occupation of the Netherlands. And how in that ter terrible place 
Betsy would say to Curry, there is no place so deep that the love of God isn't deeper still. And she told Curry that Curry, if she was spared, was to go and tell the world that message. You see, here was faith. Faith that loved the Saviour, working out in practice, willing to bear the cost of following their Saviour. Willing to say, Father, your will, not mine, be done. If you're a Christian today, let me ask you the question. Do you believe that whatever befalls you, that you will be able to say, Lord, not my will, but yours be done. That is the highest expression of faith, where we entrust ourselves to the sovereign care and oversight of our great God and Saviour. Jesus has been arrested. Things are really going to hot up as the evening unfolds and the new day dawns. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for such a wonderful Saviour. We thank you that even face to face with his captors, those who would have him done away with, he's in complete control of himself and of the situation. <clears throat> He has not been surprised. Indeed, he says this is exactly what Scripture said would happen. And we can read in the Old Testament of how he would be betrayed by a kiss. We can read how he would be deserted by his disciples. And Jesus stands supremely calm in the midst of it all. Father, you truly spoke your peace into his heart as he submitted to your will for our salvation. As we bring this day to you, we pray that we might know your presence with us. For some, it will be a difficult day. The aches and pains brought on by arthritic joints, the unsteadiness on our feet, as a result of the passing of the years. The uncertainty of whether somebody will call at our door this day or not. For some it will hold opportunity. Opportunity to show love and kindness toward a neighbour. Opportunity to speak to someone of the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Opportunity to be of service to others. Father, whatever this day holds, we pray that we may echo Jesus' own words, your will be done. Lead and guide us through it and enable us in it to give all praise and honour and glory to you, our great God. It's the writer to the Hebrews who would remind us, Jesus for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame. And even here in Gethsemane, he sees the end of the road. He sees glory awaits. And Father, what was true for him is equally true for every single one of his followers today. Bless us with your presence. We leave ourselves in your loving care. In Jesus' precious name. Amen.